wait for a few people to click on to our Monday Night Live. want to welcome everyone who's clicking on. Good evening, Fred, and others who are, who are coming on. Susie, hi. I um, want to uh, um, begin here, as we always do. Together we make the sign of the cross and say, we are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, Susie. Good to see you as well. Um, and those who don't post their name... I, I don't think I really know how to do that myself, but um, I I'm glad that you all are joining us, and uh, tonight we're going to be looking at the prophet Jeremiah. The first lesson for this coming Sunday is from the 15th chapter. I'm going to introduce it by looking briefly at the first chapter, his call to ministry, and then see where he's at now by chapter 15. So uh, uh, why don't we uh, have an opening prayer? And uh, then we'll get started. Gracious Lord, our, our, uh, our country is in need of your, your spirit to lead, to guide, to transform. We thank you for the scripture last, uh, on Sunday and the, that we had this week about Romans 12, that we are called to be transformed by the renewing of our mind through the work of your Holy Spirit speaking the word into our lives. Uh, with the wildfires out west, with political turmoil always, with COVID-19, with two tropical storms or hurricanes set to strike within two days of each other, um, with another black man shot seven times in the back, um, our country is desperately in need of your help, Lord. In all our crises, we reach out to you. Lord, you spoke to a, a country in turmoil through the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, Lord, help us uh, to hear the word you would have us hear this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, good to have you all on. Um, I can greet the people. Hi, uh, Karen, good to have you on as well. Um, I said I was going to, we're going to look at uh, Jeremiah 15, uh, some of the verses from our first lesson this coming Sunday. Hi, Joyce. Good to have you as well. So I'm going to introduce uh, that with looking at a little bit of his call. His call starts in verse 4, chapter 1, verse 4. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you, and I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I, Jeremiah, said, oh, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. The word in Hebrew, youth, uh, na'an, or excuse me, na'ar, is uh, 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 of indeterminate age, but still a, a person who is dependent on their parents. So... He's a young man, probably not a child, but a young man. I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. That was verses 7 and 8. In verses 9 and 10, he tells them what he's going to say. And then in verses 17 and 19, he promises how he will protect him. And that, that leads us up to, to our text in Jeremiah 15. So what he is to say, Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant three things, to pluck up and, and break down. Um, you could think of that as weaving, weaving sin, uh, pointing out the sin, plucking it up out, destroying the sin, uh, throwing it away, breaking it down. Um, he's going to be 
speaking about sin, to destroy and overthrow. Well, he's going to speak about consequences if the people do not repent, um, how punishment will come. And thirdly, to build and to plant. God's final word is always a word of hope and renewal. These are the three types of words he's going to speak. One, pointing out sin, plucking it out from the people, warning them, secondly, about consequences or punishment if they don't repent, and thirdly, when trouble comes because they do not repent, God promises that he will speak words to build up and to plant, uh, words of hope and renewal. Then God had also promised in verse 8, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. He delineates that more in verse 17 and 18. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you, dress yourself for work. Arise and say to them everything that I have commanded you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. And I, behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, declares the Lord, to deliver you. He will make him a fortified city, an iron pillar, bronze walls. They will fight against him, but they will not prevail over him. Uh, remember the gospel lesson we had last Sunday, that the gates of Hades shall, shall not prevail against the church and the word that the church speaks. Well, here, Jeremiah uh, will be like a gate in a city, and they will not prevail over him. That's the promise. That's the call uh, and the promise that God gave to Jeremiah. So then we come to our text for today, uh, chapter 15. He's been speaking these specific words to the people, um, and... Uh, uh, God warns them, it's kind of like the word number two, God warns them of destruction. Uh, this is just prior to our reading. Um, uh, he uh, uh, warns them in verse uh, 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 two of chapter 15, thus says the Lord, those who are for pestilence to pestilence, those who are for the sword to the sword, for those who are for famine to famine, and those who are for captivity to captivity. Um, when they ask you, where shall we go? Chapter, verse 2, say to them, some of you are going to pestilence, others to the sword, others to famine, others to captivity. In fact, that is what will happen to the people of Israel because they have failed to repent. Uh, the, there will be four kinds of devourers. Verse 3, verse uh uh, the sword to kill, the dogs to tear, the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. Ugly language. So this is that second part, the warning about uh, consequences or punishment that will come if the people do not repent. Okay, so that leads us to our text in uh, chapter 15, uh, verse 15. He goes on in all these other verses, warning them that that everything they've trusted in, their wealth, their treasures, everything, uh, will be taken from them and given to an enemy. Verse 15, Jeremiah speaks to the Lord. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Jeremiah has been faithfully speaking God's word, and it is not well received. Um, the, uh, the, the people um, have heard Jeremiah, and they don't believe his word of, of trouble, consequences to their sin, punishment from the Lord. They, they go to the temple, but they go to the other altars of the other gods as well. Uh, they're trying to please everybody, and they're not singly dedicated to God. And he, um, Jeremiah has been faithfully speaking the word of warning, and it is not well received. 
So people are against him. He is being persecuted. He is persecuted as much or more than any other prophet. So then in the text I had chosen for today, chapter 15, verses 16 through 19, Jeremiah first puts that complaint out, just in case you don't know God. People are causing me a lot of grief. Um, in your forbearance, take me not away. Know that I, for your sake, bear reproach. I'm going through trouble. Don't let it end me. Then he tells God, uh, your words were found, and I ate them. The word God gave him to speak, he, he digested it, so that then he could speak it out. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. This is the call for us every day to spend time with God in, in the word, meditating on a verse, on a portion of a verse, meditating on a chapter, and on something that spoke to us in that one, two, or three chapters that we read. It's not just a matter of ingesting the food, but ingesting, but digesting. Letting that, that word break down and, and then nourish our soul our, as, as something we might take in for food then is broken down in our digestive tract and nourishes every cell of our body. So God's word is not only to be taken in, but it is to be digested. And in that digestive process, it nourishes us. Um, I, I, your words were found and I ate them. I, I digested them. I spent time ruminating about that word. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. Uh, that was a wonderful verse to me among two verses uh, that I, uh, God spoke to me about today as I was looking at God's word and thinking about God's word or digesting God's word. One of the things I did today is I chose the scriptures for us to meditate on during the, uh, uh, to do our daily devotions on during the month of September. Not hard, I use the Sunday scriptures, but I choose which verses we'll look at each day and, and then break that down. And as I was looking at it, one of those days, I, I believe it's the final Sunday of September, uh, a word jumped out at me from the middle of the reading, and I knew that, that it was God speaking to me. The phrase was from Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Uh, that word convicted my heart. I'm glad that I'm able still to be convicted that my heart is not so hard that warnings bounce off my heart or my mind but that God spoke to me then I'd been I'd been grumbling lately at least for a week and a half I've been grumbling anybody who spent much time around me knows that for a week and a half I've been grumbling you see I saw my and uh, uh, he said I could start therapy in two to three weeks now I'll see the doctor again tomorrow uh, for a, no, no, in two days on Wednesday for a, a one month uh, checkup. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or like a five week checkup. But when I saw him, he said I could start in two or three weeks, which would normally, with a large tear of the rotator cuff, you have to wait four weeks to begin. So he was saying you could start in three or four weeks. Um, well, I took that to heart and set up an appointment at three and a half weeks a week and a half ago on a Friday with a local firm. They called me up the morning of therapy and said, you can't come. Uh, you're not allowed to come for four weeks. I'm thinking, oh, the doctor said I could come in two to three weeks or what would be three to four weeks. So I waited three and a half. And I thought that would work. So I called the doctor's office. He hadn't written that uh, in, in, the, um, in his notes. Uh, so the secretary didn't have that message that I could start at week three or four. Uh, and maybe he was just being encouraging. I don't know. So um, calling back the, uh, but, but definitely I could start my therapy after four weeks. That date would have been last Tuesday. So I called back on Tuesday and said, well, uh, when can I get started here? And they said, 
what would end up being tomorrow on the uh, 20, uh, 25th. So wait, that's, uh, uh, I, I could start one week earlier. Uh, that, that's four weeks. Oh no, you can't start till after five weeks. No, his orders, which I have, which they have, say weeks one through four, you do nothing. Weeks five through eight, passive therapy. So, but I decided I wasn't getting anywhere. They were determined I wouldn't start till today. So I just stopped fighting that. And, uh, well, just waiting for today. But I wanted to get started early at three and a half weeks. And now it's delayed to five weeks. I been grumbling. If somebody says, how's it going? I'm saying, oh, it's okay, but uh, I, I don't start my therapy for five weeks. It's, uh, can't they count one, two, three, four? <laughs> oh, really bad. Tomorrow I go for therapy. And uh, this word jumped out from me to me from God. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Grumbling, you know what that is. That's just adult pouting. Um, you get upset and you kind of mutter under your breath and complain to everybody except to the person you ought to complain to. Um, grumbling is just carrying a negative attitude. And disputing is arguing. I disagree with you. I should have started after four weeks, not after five weeks. It's right there on the piece of paper. <laughs> God spoke to my heart today. I believe I'm right. And I'd be dead wrong. There's no right way to do a wrong thing, but there are plenty of wrong ways to do the right thing. I don't think God wanted me to go in there and be grumbling or complaining or disputing. I, I talked to somebody earlier today and I said it would be like an anti-witness. If I'm supposed to bear witness to the grace and mercy and love of God and I go in there just complaining, grumbling and disputing, arguing, what kind of witness would that be? So I had that from Philippians chapter 2 and I, and I saw it here also. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy. I digested their word, your word, and, and it just filled my life with joy. And, you, and, and, and they became the delight of my heart for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I'm going to go there. They're going to know I'm Pastor Bob. And I would give a witness as Pastor Bob of grumbling and disputing, God forbid. What was I ever thinking? God, for, God forbid and God forgive me for allowing that attitude in my heart. I battle these things all the time. I don't know how you battle things, but sin is ever at work in my life and trying to draw me away from God's will and, and a faithful witness to God. But he called me. He, he got my attention today as I was choosing uh, passages to reflect on next week and and he spoke to me in the past, not next week, next month, and he spoke to me that I am called by his name. I'm a child of God. About time to act like it. Stop grumbling. Stop arguing. It's not going to win anything anyway. Go be a witness for Jesus. Okay, Lord, enough said. See, that's why we digest God's word. Um, I don't think when Jeremiah wrote this word that or when Paul wrote his word to the Philippians, they were actually thinking about Bob's uh, rotator cuff surgery and the delay of getting started in therapy. I'm, I'm absolutely positive they had no clue about those things. But God did. And God spoke those words to me, inspired them to let me hear them and digest them and, and to say God is speaking to me. That's what he does is you take time in his word. He will speak to you. Some days more directly than others, like today for me but he will speak. Jeremiah goes on in verse, that was verse 16, verse 17. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. He watched the people, the company of evildoers, going about, a uh, company of revelers, going about doing all the evil they were doing. Revelers would not be a great word. 
and be kind of the word of the party goer in the midst of COVID, that they don't care anything about the rules of how we ought to uh, keep social distancing, and they're just spreading a disease. Do not, uh, no, he said, I am not going to sit with people who are opposed to God's will and God's ways. I, I think of the, the same thought is exactly expressed in Psalm chapter 1, which I'm turning to in just one second. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, and stand, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. He doesn't associate with those who are going down the wrong path. Well, Jeremiah says, I separated myself from those who are walking down the evil path. I sat alone because your hand was upon me and you'd filled me with indignation. I wonder if that was indignation over the sins of the people. Therefore, verse 19, therefore, thus says the Lord. Now, now so so here he's, he's, uh, he's kind of doing a little bit of what I was doing. Verse 15, if you remember, O Lord, remember me and visit me. Take vengeance on my persecutors. He's a little upset. Take vengeance on my persecutors. You know, I, I ate your word and became to me a joy. I, I've been doing the right stuff. I haven't been sitting with the people who are uh, intentionally sinning against you. I sat alone. Verse 18, why is my pain increasing? Excuse me, excuse me. Why is my pain unceasing? My wound incurable, refusing to be healed. Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? You're coming to the stream to get fresh water and all of a sudden it's dried up. Oh, what an accusation to make. You, you can kind of hear Jeremiah saying, Lord, I'm in the right. I, I ate your word. I delighted in your word. It was joyful to me. And, and, and yet you sent persecutors against me and, and I, I have some kind of wound that's incurable. And Lord, will you be like a deceitful brook? I'm kind of accusing God of being that. Who? How will God respond to this grumbling of Jeremiah? You know, sometimes you, you, you're doing the right stuff, but it gets hard. Well, that's what's been happening for Jeremiah. Therefore, thus says the Lord. So God's going to speak to him. <laughs> and what will he say? Therefore, thus says the Lord. If you return, I will restore you. And you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. God says to Jeremiah, you've, you've stepped away. As much as you say that you haven't set with the seat, set with the scoffers, or walked in the way of the revelers, you're now accusing me. You've stepped away from trust. So that, and if you've stepped away from trust, that's why you're grumbling. That's why you're complaining. So Jeremiah, if you return, I, I will restore you. I will give you that strength. You shall stand before me. If you've fallen, I will help you. You can stand, rise, and you'll be able to stand. If you utter what is precious, God's word and truth and love and faith in God, if you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. You aren't going to have to respond to them, react to them. They will respond to you. I will turn them toward you. And I will make you to this people, and here reminiscent of God's promise of protection from chapter 1, verses 17 through 19, I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you 
and deliver you, declares the Lord. He was going through a really rough time, and he began to grumble and complain. He could have turned and asked God for help and trusted in God. He didn't. But that's okay. God came to him. Not in harshness, but in truth, saying, you've wandered. C come back to me. If you return, I will restore you. And you will stand. And I will, as I made my promise before, he makes it exactly again. Chapter 1, verse 17 to 19. Now chapter 15, verse 20. I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail. There will be trouble, but they won't win. Because I am with you to save you and deliver you. Whatever the troubles are that you're facing that you would maybe like me be caused to uh, complain about a little bit, hear that promise. I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I believe God is with our country too. I believe if we could hear this promise of God and, and we could, we could um, return to him the troubles we face, some of them are natural. Hurricanes or tropical systems. Horrific fires in California. Some are just ways of people dealing with each other. A young man being shot in the back seven times um, by the police. The vitriolic language between political opponents. The things that are plaguing our country now. We can call on help from the, the natural disasters. We can repent and ask God to, to spare us because God sends sometimes these disasters. I'm not saying any one specific disaster. And God even comes in the midst of the disasters to deliver us. But it, if we can repent, if we can look at ourselves, not at the other people of what's wrong with them, but we can look at our own lives God says to, uh, to Jeremiah, if you return, if you stop uttering what is worthless, we don't have to look at anybody else. We can look at ourselves and we can remember to, to return to the Lord. So let me pray and ask God to be with you. I see that Shirley joined our meeting as well. God bless you, Shirley. And let me pray for us tonight. Lord, thank you for stopping me at short, just seeing your word jump out at me. And that I knew it was a, absolutely a word from you, and I, I saw that word again. Forgive me, Father, for the ways I've gr been grumbling and disputing. Forgive me, Lord, and help me uh, to stop now saying anything worthless, uttering what is worthless. Help me to utter words that are honorable and true and gospel and mercy. Thank you, Lord, that although I get off track, you, you have ways to draw me back into you. I pray, Lord, I thank you for people who pray for me regularly. Even hearing your word is a gift of your grace and their prayers. I pray for each person, Lord, that's part of this study tonight or reviewing it later, that, that, Lord, I pray, as people pray for me, I pray for them, that you would speak your word into their lives, that your word, Lord, would be for them a joy as they digest your word, that that, that word would speak life and delight into their lives, even if it's a hard word, but it's a true word in it. It brings peace. Speak to them as they go to you daily, that they might have your word guiding and leading their lives. Lord, you call us to go forth as, as your children. You've called us by name. Help us to remember that call in our lives to be the light, the salt, the children of God, and to go live like it each day. In the midst of their struggles, Lord, 
and whatever the complaints are that each person has this night, I invite them to do what you invited Jeremiah to do, to trust you and to come back to you and that you would help them stand and you would save them and deliver them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining me for uh, our Monday evening devotion. Tomorrow evening, we're going to be in Psalm 26. God bless you and have a great night.